Before we get to today's video, we wanted to announce that Crime Zone's official Patreon page is now live. In addition to ad-free videos and other extras, patrons will also get access to weekly bonus videos for our Crimes of the Week and Crimes of the Week International series. So if you want even more Crime Zone content, head over to patreon.com slash crimezone for exclusive cases not featured in today's video. Authorities in Utah County say they have arrested or cited 35 people this week after they were caught participating in a large rooster fighting operation. Police busted the operation last Saturday when they received a tip about its location in a barren part of Cedar Valley, west of Utah Lake. When authorities arrived at the scene, they allegedly found quite the elaborate setup. The perpetrators had built two fighting arenas out of plywood and the property was completely fenced in, secured with a gate and a lock, and also featured a large parking lot. Investigators said that the lot was full when they got there, and that the sounds of cheering and rooster crows could be heard from inside. In all, police were able to rescue 15 live birds, but at least two dozen others were discovered dead. The latest incident apparently comes on the heels of another rooster fighting bust that took place at the beginning of May. In that case, a 32-year-old man named Jose Mesa Basan was arrested after thousands of chickens and baby chickens were found in his home. A 52-year-old man is being praised for his heroism this week after he successfully intervened in an unprovoked stabbing attack against a woman on a New York City subway platform. The incident took place at approximately 10 p.m. on Wednesday, when 54-year-old Kelly Daly was waiting for her train at a Union Square station in Manhattan. She felt someone come up behind her and give her what felt like a hug before she began to be repeatedly stabbed in her back, neck, and shoulders. The alleged attacker, 22-year-old Joshua Nazario, seemed to have targeted her completely at random. That's when Sean Conaboy, a freelance cameraman for the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, decided to intervene. He tackled Nazario to the ground and fought with him, managing to keep him restrained until authorities could arrive. According to Nazario's family, he suffers from schizophrenia and recently ran out of medication. His aunt says that his doctor did not prescribe him anymore and she wasn't sure why. She also said that Nazario had never been violent in the past. Thankfully, Daly was rushed to the hospital and was reportedly treated for non-life-threatening injuries. She is expected to survive. On Monday, representatives from Indiana's Marion County Coroner's Office announced that the remains of an Indianapolis man had been successfully located nearly 17 months after he disappeared. The body of 58-year-old Roger Farmer was found on Thursday, May 13th, in a storage unit in the town of Brownsburg. An autopsy revealed that he had died from a gunshot wound to the head. Roger was reported missing in late December of 2019 after he failed to return home from a hunting trip. Though his family members continued to receive text messages from his phone following his disappearance, these messages were not like the ones he usually sent. Roger apparently used to talk to text, which usually caused his messages to read as long, run-on sentences. However, the messages that were sent after he went missing featured punctuation and emojis. There was also significant activity on Roger's bank account, causing it to accrue a negative balance, something that was also out of character for him. Roger's 37-year-old son, Jeremy Farmer, was arrested and charged in connection with his disappearance in February after numerous pieces of evidence began to pile up against him. Jeremy was allegedly caught on camera at a local hardware store using his father's credit card to buy a large amount of cleaning supplies, as well as a 96-gallon trash can with wheels, heavy plastic drop cloths, and latex gloves. The storage unit where Roger's body was found was also discovered to have been rented by Jeremy in November of 2019. According to reports, Jeremy had a long history of stealing from his father, and their relationship was strained. Authorities in Ohio County, Kentucky, say that they are currently investigating the deaths of four people after their bodies were found on a chicken farm property in the town of Beaver Dam. The incident began when local police received reports of a shooting at about 4.30 p.m. on Wednesday. When they arrived, they found three people dead from apparent gunshot wounds outside of a residence on the property and discovered that a nearby barn, which was also located on the property, was engulfed in flames. When firefighters managed to extinguish the blaze, 
they found the badly burned body of the fourth victim inside. The three shooting victims have been identified as 20-year-old Hunter Owings, 44-year-old Nora Owings, and 66-year-old Calvin Leisure Jr. At the time of this recording, neither the name nor the cause of death of the fourth victim have been released. Few other details about the incident have been reported, and police say that they're still trying to figure out what happened. In particular, it is said that they are attempting to determine whether they are dealing with a homicide or a murder-suicide. According to reports, the property where the incident occurred is a farm that supplies chickens to Tyson Foods. Authorities in Hartford County, Connecticut, say that they have found the body of a missing 30-year-old woman this week and have arrested her husband in connection with her death. According to reports, Jessica Edwards was last seen by her family on Mother's Day, but her husband, 22-year-old Taj Hutchinson, told police he had seen her the following day. When authorities began their investigation, they could find no trace of Jessica, but her vehicle was still parked in the driveway of her and her husband's South Windsor home. Search efforts for Jessica came up empty until Friday, when police discovered her remains at the entrance to Hockenham River Linear Park in East Hartford. Though police have not released the exact details of how they managed to locate Jessica's body, it has been reported that the discovery was made after data obtained through the use of, quote, technological search warrants. Hutchinson was arrested the same day that Jessica's body was found, at a home in Manchester, roughly seven miles south of South Windsor. It was reported that the couple's eight-month-old son was also safely removed from the house. Investigators say they are still trying to confirm Jessica's cause of death, but said that they expected to release further details to the public in the near future. Taj Hutchinson has been charged with first-degree manslaughter and is currently being held on $1 million bond. This week, it was announced that a Florida couple had each pled guilty to separate charges resulting from a bizarre and disturbing series of crimes targeting black bears. According to reports, 32-year-old Charles Scarborough and his wife, 29-year-old Hannah Weiner Scarborough, were part of a group of people who lured black bears with food in rural Florida and then attacked them with packs of dogs. The gruesome attacks were then filmed and posted on social media. A number of the attacks are said to have taken place in the Ocala National Forest, north of Orlando. The Scarboroughs, along with several others, would attract the bears using pastries and donuts and would sick their dogs on them when they arrived. At least one of the bears was reportedly shot and skinned. In addition to the Scarboroughs, at least six others have been arrested and one other woman has been convicted for their roles in the horrifying illegal hunting and animal fighting scheme. Charles Scarborough pled guilty to conspiracy to commit racketeering, animal baiting and fighting, unlawful use of a two-way communicating device, and unlawful taking of a black bear. He has not yet been sentenced because he has agreed to cooperate with prosecutors in their ongoing case against the six remaining suspects. However, it has been reported that he is facing anywhere from five years of probation to two years in prison. Anna Scarborough, meanwhile, was sentenced to more than five years of probation for her involvement in the crimes. She must also pay roughly $3,900 to the state to cover their prosecution costs, as well as almost $23,000 to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission for their investigation. This week, the New York Attorney General's office announced that they had arrested and charged a Long Island man after it was alleged that he had been fraudulently collecting disability benefits for years. According to reports, 50-year-old Anthony Ragusa first filed for disability benefits in 2013 after he claimed that he had fallen while working as an electrician and suffered injuries that made him unable to work. Ragusa claimed that these injuries were so severe that it was difficult to put on shoes and that he could not walk or even sit still for more than 15 to 30 minutes at a time. Between 2015 and 2020, he reiterated these claims and continued to receive disability payments. While Ragusa was apparently too injured to work, he had no problem continuing to own and operate his limousine company based in New Hyde Park. Then, in 2017, he began training to become a professional bodybuilder. Ragusa's egregious lies were finally exposed after authorities discovered numerous pictures of him on his wife's Instagram. In the photos, he could be seen hanging out with his wife at the gym, working out, and going to the beach, among other places. With an overwhelming amount of evidence in hand, authorities arrested Ragusa, and he now faces charges of grand larceny and offering a false instrument for filing.
Authorities in New Jersey say that two people are dead and at least 12 others are wounded after a terrifying shooting at a house party took place this weekend. The incident began at around 11.50 p.m. on Saturday night when gunfire erupted inside the house on East Commerce Street in Fairfield Township. The residents were reportedly throwing a 90s-themed party for friends and family, and people of all ages were in attendance. According to witnesses, at least 15 gunshots could be heard inside the house over a period of a few minutes. Chaos quickly ensued as partygoers attempted to flee to nearby houses, and people trying to get away in their vehicles slammed into each other. The deceased victims have been identified as 30-year-old Kevin Elliott and 25-year-old Asia Heater. Both of them were from Bridgerton. So far, a single arrest has been made in the case, a man identified as 36-year-old Kevin Dawkins. However, it appears that Dawkins has so far only been arrested on numerous weapons possession charges, and at the time of this recording, the nature of his involvement in the incident remains unclear. Authorities have not yet provided any information about how many people were involved in the attack or what the motive was, but say that they believe the attack was targeted and that they expect to make additional arrests as the investigation continues. That's it for this edition of Crimes of the Week. If you enjoyed our video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Crime Zone for more true crime content like this, making sure to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with our latest releases. Thank you for watching.